Just in time. We'd already finished eating. We we're about to place a to-go order for Clara. She's back on board, getting ready for her show. Take a look at the menu. I'm sure there's something you'll like. Ida is a bit of a local celebrity. For her cooking, I mean. Hey Ezra, I was just asking about you. He's around the corner playing a video game. Maybe go let him know that you two are back? Oh, where's the old man anyway? Aw, oh, bad luck. You'll get it next time. Hey, got a quarter? He's almost got this. It's true. Sure, I have one quarter. Thank you. So, uh, where's... They took him. Damn, yeah, he really got himself in a situation there. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go sit down. Cool. Uh, the food is good here. I think everyone else is finishing up, but you could probably get something to go. All right, Claw Maestro, let's give it another shot. Let's see what's on the top of the pile here. There's a stuffed octopus. A plastic bag full of clamshells, a cowboy hat, and some big headphones. That octopus has a leg wrapped around the boombox underneath it. The shells are pretty clear, but I don't know if the claw can really grip the bag well. Cowboy hat is in the corner, so it's kind of tricky to tell if it's wedged in or not. Those headphones might be a good bet, but I can't see the cord. It could be wrapped around something. What are you going to try for? I'll try and get the headphones. Good call. I think it's our best bet. Okay. When I put this quarter in, you'll have about eight seconds to grab your prize. The headphones are on the right, pretty close to the middle. Let me know if you need help lining it up. I've got a slightly different view of the field from up here. Ready? Here we go. Johnny inserts the coin and the machine awakens. The claw hovers in front left corner of the machine. Does this look right? No, oh, too far left. And you need to push it back further. Oh shit. Does this look right? Or too far to the left? All right, this is about it. Yeah, that looks good to me. Go for it. Perfect. The claw drops. It grabs the headphones. The claw's grasp seems unusually weak on this round, and the headphones tumble back out before they can be retrieved. Ah, oh, you were robbed. I guess the house always wins, except on Tuesdays. A friend of ours always said that, but I never really knew what he meant. Oh well. Hey, listen. It sounds like that old man you were following around, um, I guess, had to leave? Is he okay? Yeah, he's okay. I mean, I'm sure he could be better, but I don't think we need to worry about him. Anyway, I don't know what kind of plans you have now, but if you need help figuring out what your next move, you can always talk to me and Miss Junebug. I just wanted to make sure you know that. Could I keep going with you? Hey, I've got no objection. 
We have a pretty ad hoc thing going on, me and Junebug. I'd have to talk to her, but I bet you're welcome to tag along for a while, if you're into it. Hey, maybe we can have time to poke around this place a little. They have some pretty wild stuff in here. Hey, did you see this? They keep a table full of fake food over here. I never know why. Actually, I think it might be real food, coated with shellac or something, preserved. Oh, look, this tentacle looking thing is half eaten. This is someone's meal that they didn't finish. Tentacle, gross. Man, I don't know, some people really like that stuff. I had some fried calamari once at a gas station. It's pretty good, but I stripped a gear trying to chew the beak. They're supposed to take them out. If Sam and I had to preserve this half-eaten meal, it must have been pretty important to them, right? Maybe it belonged to someone they care about, like a beloved uncle I had a mid-meal stroke, so they kept it in his memory. My folks left behind a bag of sunflower seeds, but I threw it away. I should have kept it, right? Oh, uh, no, I didn't mean that, kid. You don't need to hang on to every little memento. I'm sure you still remember them just fine. You worried about them? Yeah, it's weird that they just disappeared. Yeah, listen, that's okay to be worried. You're doing fine. Weird, somehow I thought it was his truck and delivery and all. It was. That's just what she's saying, but he gave it to her before they took him away. But you're gonna deliver it anyway? Why? He's my friend. He needs my help to finish his job. That's right. He's our friend too. Johnny I will help you unload when we get there. Lift with your legs, Cricket. Yes, ma'am. So, how was everything? How was the sweet cave snail? Devastating. You're a killer, Ida. Well, I can't take all the credit. Sam came across a whole cave snail colony down there about a year back, and we've been leaving rock candy for them to gorge on since. We just started harvesting earlier this month. Yes, it's all about patience down here. Everything grows more slowly in the dark. There's a fish in the lake live that lives to 200 years and its flavor profile only develops at about 75. I've got a pot of bones in there that's been stewing for at least a week. I don't even remember why I put them on. Come to think of it, I don't even remember what kind of bones they are. Oh, we need one for the road. Clara said she wanted um, something primordial, she said. What does that mean? Uh, she must have meant something simple. It could be. Here, you pick. I'm not good at this. Let's go with... Black pepper crushed salamander kebabs. Good choice. Your friend will love it. I'll have that right out, sweetie. He gently compresses a pea-sized eyeball on a plate. The eye is hard, like glass. Oh, you look candied fish eye? Most kids are repulsed just looking at them, which is a shame because they're really delicious. <laughs> I have a bowl of them in the kitchen. I'll bring you some out. Sorry I startled you, sweetie. Whose food is this? This is the diver's table, and this was the diver's meal. This food is about 15 years old. It's true. Things were different then. Nobody came to eat here. We were fighting just to keep the lights on. Sam, my husband. Sam was depressed. He couldn't catch anything. That was part of the problem. 
Most of what we served was shipped in frozen or dried, and I just threw it in the fryer. We both came a long way since then. Well, two young men came in for dinner. Seasoned divers, they said. Over 10,000 hours between them in Lake Cliff alone. They'd been out all day salvaging parts from a riverboat wreck and had worked up a fierce hunger, they said. They ordered the whole menu without even looking. It was a short menu in those days. I set them right here and went back to the kitchen. Sam was at the next table doing a sudoku and drinking malt liquor, his usual routine at the time. An hour later, I was cleaning up when Sam came bursting into the kitchen. Ida, he said, kind of frantic. These divers are still hungry. Bring them another course. And I said, they'd already ordered the whole menu. Sam said, make something new. Keep making up dishes, whatever. Just keep bringing out food. So I did until the small hours of the morning. I made up so many new dishes that night. I could write a book and it was good. Inspired. But I was working so hard and fast at the burning edge of inspiration, I didn't think to write any of it down. And I was so wrecked to exhaustion the next day, I knew I couldn't remember what I'd done in the kitchen. Sam thought we could take a photograph of the leftovers, but we couldn't get the lighting right. So we just shellacked the whole table. Now when I need inspiration for the menu, I come and look here and think about all those ingredients, all those ingenious dishes I threw together for those divers. Of course, they didn't pay their full bill. I heard one of them complaining to the other, let's just pay half and let them charge the other half to whatever demon in the kitchen kept making up food faster than we could ask for it. But it all worked out. Things have really turned around since then. This place is actually pretty popular now. The success and our expanded menu inspired Sam too. He started bringing back the most magnificent ingredients from his nightly dives. I better get to work. Stay right here, sweetie. I'll bring you a treat on my way back out. Well, buddy, I guess you're the catch of the day. The one and only. <laughs> So, what are you? You look like, well, some kind of squid, I guess. Kind of a mopey little guy, huh? Yeah, I can see it in your eyes. You smell like, sort of, buttery. Well, that should be just fine. Skin feels like sandpaper, huh? Well, she'll figure something out. I think I'll call you... Buttery Squid. Welcome to Salmonidas, the one and only Buttery Squid. I hope you enjoy your stay. I mean, not too much. Have you ever seen a creature like me before? You were pretty far down there. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm the first, except there were two divers who went before me long ago. Maybe that was before your time. How old are you anyway? I wonder. They ate here once, back in the bad old days. Two young guys, could have been brothers, maybe. I was over in the corner with my coffee and crossword. I hadn't been able to catch a thing, so I'd have just fried up something from Frozen. Well, these guys were hungry enough to eat it, and asked for more, and they did at least as much talking as eating. See, like I said, they were divers, and like I said, they might have been brothers. There were kind of a rivalry going on between them or something. Ida was about to write up their checks, but I slipped calmly, quietly into the kitchen for a minute and told her just to keep bringing out food. I figured they wouldn't notice. Caught up in their boasting, as they were, and I wanted to listen. They went back and forth for hours about all the deep and dangerous dives they'd been on, new tunnels they'd discovered, all the weird creatures they've encountered at the weirdest depths of Lake Leaf. It was like a dance, no, like a boxing match. Each story went deeper than the last, and I listened to every word of it, memorized every description of every tunnel and diving route they discovered. That's my map now, you see. For 15 years I've been using roots those two divers discussed right there at the table. Yeah, I could write a guidebook to the depths of this lake, but I don't dare. Someone would steal my good diving spots, and then where would we be? See, people come here from all over just to try our daily catch because they know it's unique. Ain't you proud? 
Since I can't write any of it down, I just preserved that table where they had their meal so I can look at it to jog my memory. Like they were eating pickled crab when they talked about that shipwreck full of salamanders. Pretty clever, huh? My own secret code. Well, I'll be straight with you, buttery squid. There is one feature of this arraignment that I find unsettling. In fact, I lose a decent amount of sleep over it. I told you those boys were competing, right? One-upping each other, I mean. Each getting wilder, more adventurous as they traded tales. Well, I navigated mostly in the dark down there. Just going by touch and kind of mental picture as I construct from their detailed boasts. And every time I explored a new diving spot from those relocations, uh, those recollections, I have to weigh it all against the risk that I'm heading right into a dangerous falsehood. One of those men could have dealt, uh, could have felt for a moment like he was losing some ground in their little duel, so he could have slipped a fake one in there. Maybe told a fib about some dive he went on and found a colony of blind shrimp living in a discarded refrigerator. When I get down there, my diving bell cracks open on a sharp rock where he said that fridge would be. And that's the end of Sam of Salmonidas. To be honest, that possibility puts the fear of death in me every time I touch water. Hey, Sam. Good haul tonight. We'll see what she can make of it. Yeah, pretty good, I think. I hit some trouble down by the narrow tunnel. Some kind of fast-growing freshwater barnacles just about sealed it up. I picked away for half an hour before I gave up and went around the other way. But I got the catch of the day. That's the important part. That's what people travel for. What's the catch today? This here's a buttery squid. Mopey. Sandpapery old squid. I don't know how she'll fix him, but that sandpapery quality ought to do something for a... What do they call it? Mouthfeel? Will you stay for a drink? I've got a dark rum that goes well with coffee. Uh -huh. I think we're about to leave, but thanks. Just passing through. Hey, are we all? Oh, she's got your food ready. You all enjoy your meal, all right? got such a good style incredibly weird but i adore the pacing the, the dialogue's very well written as well I thought the song was going to play us out there, but nope, there's more to this adventure. See that? Just looks like a swirling mess of garbage, doesn't it? Well, that's what it is. I don't know why trash seems to collect right there, all of the spots on the lake. It's always been that way. Everyone just navigates around it like it was an island or something. I think I see some desks and chairs swirling around the edge there. Those all-in-one desks, like they have in schools, if I remember right. It's been a few years since I saw the inside of one. Those must have washed down from somewhere. I've never known there to be a school on the lake. 
was Genomai's School of Beauty. It was run by sisters, Cassie and Plora. Paula. Indistinguishable except for their haircuts. But I wouldn't think they'd have used desks like that. We used to stop there most every night to let someone off for a cheap haircut. Student stylist, you know? They sparred many a sailor the pain of a botched do-it-yourself do. But I guess they got in deep to the power company. Those blow dryers and curling irons burn a lot of coal. It's a shame they had to close down. The haircuts are gone, but the hair keeps growing. Yeah, this cluttered place makes a decent local museum. It's as good as history as I could ever tell. We arrived at a small houseboat neighborhood that sometimes hosted concerts for the pleasure of its residents, where Clara was scheduled that night to perform. Junebug and Johnny watched the show from the dockyards with the others. Interesting. Oh. Hmm. I remember this. I told you. Yeah, you don't have to say it. Only because it's always true. <laughs> she played at the flower shop. Crane opened. He was having trouble with his tape machine. So he just droned out on the lap steel. He got really into it, and he went on for, like, forever. Everyone was falling asleep. Not everyone. I remember the air was warm, perfumed. You were playing with some petals you found on the floor, and I was looking at the ceiling. I remember the ceiling was glass. During the week, that room was a greenhouse. I don't know where they put the plants when they had the band in. Maybe outside, if the weather was nice. It was nice that night. Warm. Smelled like spring. I remember the folding chairs, so uncomfortable, but I guess it was their only option. They had to pack everything up during the week so they had room to display the flowers. The tape stuff sounds good. That kid's going doing a good job. Yep, he's a natural born tape player. So we were talking about him earlier at the gas station? Sure, I haven't forgotten cricket. Cool, yeah, I know. Any, uh... What do you think about Ezra travelling with us for a while? We were in the back. Passing messages in code. We use a code of our own design. Inscrutable to observers. Transmitted by... A subsonic whistles. He told me a joke. It was the one about the prisoner exchanging dirty moonshine recipes. I told you the one about the free bears and the outhouse. Then you told me the one about the dentist with the rude prosthetic. We had to leave the room. If I sound hesitant or something, it's just... When I met you, when we met, we were nothing. Just these little grey shadows. Then we grew and filled in and... But we did all that together. Ezra, sure, he's just a kid, but he's already a person. What would that do to our system? Our chemistry. We stepped outside into the warm night air. There was a horse tied up in the parking lot. He wanted to go find him some food. We wandered between some low houses and came out onto an empty street. Hey, I got the masters for the new record back from Lazar. They're okay, but I... 
what? You listen to them without me? You were at the pet shop. I didn't think I could tear you free. Oh, okay. Anyway, there were a few spots where the strings distorted a little, and the whole thing has way too much reverb. But overall, it sounds pretty good. The new drum machine fits right into the mix. Nice. The only question is how to get it live. I can't control the drum machine and sing and dance at the same time. And you've got your hands full of guitar. He steps into a 24 hour convenience store. I remember the radio was playing some old Patsy Klein, right? Or was it Connie Smith? The clerk was reading one of those conspiracy slash celebrity gossip slash Bigfoot sighting newspapers. He bought a small bag of carrots for the horse. The horse ate the carrots, slowly and glumly. They're beautiful animals, horses. Everyone seems to agree. I think it's because they always look so sad. We got back to the greenhouse just as Clara was turn tuning up. She relaxed her shoulders, took a deep breath, raised both hands into their precise positions, and the room started shaking. Clara hit a note that made the glass rattle in symphony a perfect of two octaves lower. She looked like a sorceress tearing down the building with an effortless wave and an incredible focus, coaxing the empty air into some kind of moaning, rattling demon. That's the thing about the Furmin, it's the only instrument you never touch. You could see a wave of concern propagate through the greenhouse. People looked up at the trembling glass ceiling, looking at each other to see if anyone else was worried trying to catch Clara's eye and discern if she was doing it on purpose or not, if she were really trying to bury us all in glass. I'm just saying, maybe we could use a third pair of hands up there. Oh. Oh. Think you could teach the kid to play a drum machine? Um, I could teach a dog to play a drum machine. Well, there's our backup plan. It was a tense five minutes. We, the audience, alternated between fearing for our lives and laminating hers that could have given her the kind of emotional experience to play this devastating song. Then slowly, gently, Clara's hands came to rest. The Fermi went quiet, the glass stopped rattling and the room relaxed, unharmed. I met a photographer once. I mean, one in particular. She even took my portrait. I can't imagine why. She said it would immortalize me. That was a metaphor, of course. She meant I'd never be forgotten. As she was disembarking, not far from her, actually, the film fell out of her bag and was borne away by the current. I was working on the deck at the time. She sought me a sad, apologetic glance. And I wasn't bothered. It's no shame to be forgotten. Oof. Got a lot of scenes in this one. What's this place like? Dogwood Drive. It's in a small town or... It's... I really don't know. I've got a manifest the old man had in his truck here. The set antique. Mail order delivery. No return address. Shipping address. Five Dogwood Drive. Packing list. And then it's just numbers. I guess the inventory numbers of the antiques he was supposed to be delivering. Anyway, I'm glad you're coming with us. Yes, I'm always eager to see more of the country, and I enjoy the company. I will have to find a bus or a train to get to Nashville by evening. Well, they have buses everywhere, right? Oh, hey, 
I could drive you to Nashville. Seems I have a truck now. Only, how are we going to get up these stairs? That's quite a staircase. There's no way to get this truck up these stairs, is there? Not with that attitude. No, there isn't. Looks like we're making the rest of this trip on foot. I don't even know what's in there. What if it's too much to carry? Now nah, we've been loading and unloading gear since the stars were young. We were our own roadies, right? We've got expertise. All right, Cricket. Let's get this delivery packed and tie it into bundles. We're hiking it upstairs. What's in there? Antiques, I guess. Antiques. Yeah, antiques are... Uh, it's like junk, but people will pay for it. Oh. Sorry, I guess you'll be taking the bus after all. It's okay. It will be an adventure. Tired? Don't worry, lady. We're almost there. That's a cool shot. End title card now. There it is. Cool. So that wraps up another episode. I'm leaving one more for the finale. And I'm intrigued to see where it goes. <laughs>